the why? Because his spirit lives inside of me. They told Billy Graham one day, they said, God is dead. That's what Nietzsche has said. It's all over the papers. It's written on every bridge. God is dead. And Billy Graham looked at the, at the reporter that day and he said, really, God is dead? Huh, that's interesting because if he died, I wonder why I wasn't notified because I'm a member of the family. Uh, and, and besides that I just talked to him a few minutes ago and he spoke to me I know that God isn't dead come on somebody we can know Jesus we can have a relationship with the Lord that's real and powerful amen amen and then secondly we've got to be urgent the second thing we need to be urgent about is having a watchful care of our very life you've got to take care to watch it's not just enough to be saved, right? It's important that we're saved, but we've also got to be careful about the way that we live. Right? This is a powerful verse. I'm not going to linger long here. But it says, but take heed to yourselves. You know, some people just kind of live their life in a kind of, I don't know, in kind of a little zone, you know. They just go through the motions, don't think much about life, just kind of live in life. Let me tell you something. We're supposed to examine our life, right? Take heed to yourselves. It goes on to say, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. One of the things that we talk about in Celebrate Recovery that I think is so incredibly powerful, we talk about doing a daily inventory. Now, there's a moment when a person takes a giant inventory of their life, but we need to take a daily inventory. You know what we're doing? We're following this scripture when we do that. We're taking heed of our life. We're saying, okay, God, how am I doing today? Am I living out what I believe? Have I allowed the world and its compromises to sneak in around me? Am I walking worthy of the call that God has called me to? And how many of you know that if you name the name of Jesus, you've got a high calling? Amen. Just tell your neighbor if you're talking about Jesus, you've got a high calling. You're representing the highest one. Amen. The one that sits in the highest place in the universe. If you say, I'm a Christian, I'm a follower of Jesus, you have a very high calling. Amen. Amen. And so we've got to be walking with the Lord and living out a careful, in a careful way our life. And then the third thing is this, we've got to be urgent about sharing our faith. Sharing our faith. Amen. It blessed me, that song that we sang, the song, So Will I. There's a phrase in there, if he gave himself to love him, so will I. If Jesus was willing to give his life to love others, so will I. Then it goes on to talk about every single child, every single person. They're all precious in, 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 the, in the eyes of the Lord. Years ago, a farmer in Asia stood out outside of his hut, looking down the hill, he lived up on a mountain, a small mountain, but a mountain nonetheless, and he could look out over the sea, and, and, and there in the distance he saw a wave that seemed to be much larger than usual, headed toward the island where he lived. And as he watched, he, he saw the wave growing and growing in height, and he realized that it was, it was a tsunami, okay? And so, so looking around, he looked down into the, into, the, into the valley towards the ocean, and he could see that the rest of the villagers were farming in the fields below, unable to see the wave that was headed their way. And in just a few minutes, this tsunami was going to overtake them, and they would all be lost. And, and thinking very quickly, he grabbed the torch that was nearby, and he he set his hut on fire. All of the grain that he had harvested that year was in the hut, but he, he set it all on fire, and he went and he began to loudly ring a bell to warn the people that, 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 that something was happening, and, and the neighbors looked up, and they saw the smoke coming from the village, and they immediately dropped their hose, and they began to, and their harvest tools, and they began to run towards the mountainside, and, and they got just up the hill far enough, and the tsunami went underneath them and around them, and that man saved 
saved that whole village's life. And let me ask you a question. Do you think for a moment that he regretted, hey, that he regretted saying, listen, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've spent my, I, I, I burned my house to save you. I don't think he did. I don't think he ever said, oh man, I gave my whole year's wages of, that I worked for uh, burning this rice to, to, for, the, for the people. Come on. Why? Because their life was so important. And I wanted to tell you, man, that every person in the world has an importance to God. I don't care whether they have money or they don't have money, whether they look smart, whether they don't look smart, however they look, come on, I'm telling you that people are important to God. Come on, do you believe that? People matter to God. Tell your neighbor your, that, that people matter. Amen. I love this verse. Interesting, all these verses I had came up in the Sunday school class today. I don't know how they did that, but they just took my sermon and beat it up all to pieces in there. No, they didn't. They just ex expounded on it. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.11 says this, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Sobering verse, actually. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade me. Why is it that we have to be so passionate about God? Why is it that we have to be urgent? Let me tell you why. Because the same God who judged the world and brought a flood, that's the same God who's going to stand in judgment on this world. Come on. Yes, I see, see, see people say, well, I thought God was love. God is love, my friend. That's why the gospel's being preached. That's why His grace is there. That's why He's rolling out the red carpet. That's why there's forgiveness. That's why there's grace. Come on, aren't Aren't you glad that God is love? Aren't you glad that it's by grace that we're saved through faith? Aren't you glad that, that, that the, day, the, the door is open for salvation? But we've got to realize that that same God becomes the judge. Amen. If you've ever read of the white throne judgment, it's a scary thing to read about where heaven and earth flee away from His very presence. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14 tells us this, For the love of Christ compels us. Oh, let me tell you something. I don't know about you, but I want to be full of the love of God. I don't want to live my life and not have His love inside of me. I want to be baptized in His love, right? I want to be full of the love of God so that when I meet people, that the love that I have overflows. I've been praying that. Can I tell you about a dream I had? It's a really bizarre and weird dream, all right? I dreamt that I was asked to be pastor of another church, all right? It was weird, you know, because I've not sent a single resume. I, I don't have that in my mind at all or anything like that. But I had this dream that this church was telling me I need to come and be their pastor. And I stood there and I was telling them, no, I can't, I can't. And then I, I, I turned and I was looking, and I was looking toward Fountain of Life Christian Center, the people that I love at Fountain of Life Christian Center. And I was thinking of them, and, 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 and tears welled up in my eyes, and the dream and I and I turned to these people and I said I cannot go over there and be your pastor because I love these people too much I don't know it bless me but let me tell you something that's the kind of love we got to have we got to have that kind of love that picks people up when they're down not the kind of love that judges people saying strong things no no we got to have a kind of love that comes alongside them and say let me show you who Jesus is let me love you like Jesus loves would you stand with me today amen